Guatemala, Washington, my coding CQ and listening. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So on this channel, I try and show interesting radio related items. And every now and again, I come across a product which actually surprises me as to how well it works. Well, this is one of those items. Now this is the GA450 indoor portable active loop antenna with a supported frequency coverage of between 3 and 30 megahertz. Now the main loop is made from a sturdy stainless steel with a connection box located at the bottom, which is plastic. The connection box has a BNC connector, which connects into the base, which I'll show you shortly. Now in the box, we get a couple of RF feeder cables, and we also get a USB-C type cable, which is used for charging the internal battery. As this antenna is active, it contains a rechargeable 18350 lithium battery. The antenna base unit is made from plastic, but it has a very nice solid feel and it's quite weighty. Now on here, we find a top BNC socket for connecting the main loop. The rear shows some specifications and on one side of the unit, we have a BNC socket, which you connect to your feeder to your SDR or radio. Also on this side, we find the USB-C socket, which is used for charging the battery. Now on the other end, we find a status LED, which illuminates when turned on. And we also have a rotary control, which is used for turning on the unit and adjusting the antenna gain. Now assembling this antenna is fairly simple. You simply attach the top loop to the base like this, and then attach a feeder off to your SDR or radio. Now for the following tests, I'm going to place it on my rather dusty windowsill ledge here and then turn the gain to around halfway. Now I have the feeder plugged into my RSPDX SDR receiver and I'm going to use SDR Uno as the SDR software. I'll test a couple of the popular handbands to see how well this performs. Nice to hear you and uh, 73 and Merry Christmas. As you can see there, 40 meters was being received extremely well. We could see a good range of transmissions from the CW on the lower part of the band, and we could see some nice and strong FT8 signals. And then moving up into the phone section, there was plenty of signals to choose from. Now to show an example of what happens when you adjust the gain control on the GA450 base unit, watch the noise floor go up and down as I turn the rotary control. Now you can adjust this to suit your needs and also protect the front end of your radio from overloading. Another point to make is that the loop itself can be turned 360 degrees independently of the base. So if you need to fine tune a station, you do have a couple of options. Twenty meters also works pretty well, and as forty meters performed, we could see CW, FT8, voice throughout the whole twenty meter band. Now I could see some visual QRM, which looks like it's coming from some electronics in the home, but I'm sure if I was to move the antenna position, I could pretty much eliminate some of it. Now this test was literally build and then just place on the window ledge, and that's it. Well, well, to my surprise, 17 meters was even working just as well. Now you could hear Sugar 51 Delta X-Ray from Slovenia absolutely booming through. Quite incredible considering the size of this antenna and where it's actually located. Now up on 21 megahertz is where it got a little interesting as I could hear stateside coming through. 
Now you would have noticed in that clip that I switched between my NFED half wave antenna and then back to the active loop. Now as expected, the loop's performance wasn't as good as my NFED half wave, but it was still able to pull in the stateside station, which I think is actually quite remarkable. Now I did perform some tests on 80 meters and I waited until later in the day when 80 meter signals were a bit more prominent. But unfortunately, even though I could hear a couple of stations, they were just too weak. Now in this clip, you can see me switching between the NFED half wave antenna, which clearly shows lots of activity on 80 meters. I also performed some tests on 30 meters at 10 megahertz, but with trying to decode some FT8 signals. Luckily, it works pretty well, and I was receiving some nice FT8 stations from Europe. Now, when I ordered this antenna from Banggood, I wasn't really expecting it to be much, and in the past, I've tested other small or dedicated HF receiving antennas. Now, although below 7 MHz doesn't appear to work very well, from 7 MHz up to around 21 MHz, it seemed to work really well. So I think from the test I've done, personally, I would recommend this antenna to anyone who wants to be able to listen to HF signals, but doesn't have the space to install big antennas. Now, obviously you cannot transmit with this antenna, but it's great for receiving. Now I'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase this antenna from if you want to do so. Anyway, guys, there you go. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.